Welcome, welcome to another session of Jelly Roll Mystery Fun. Um, see if I can get it to come up there. Well, hello, Miss Sheila. I see you popped right on there. So glad. Let's see, that's Miss Janice. I see Miss Janice's little avatar as well. Hey, Miss Janice. Okay, so guess what? I did it, I did it. I was able to take that beautiful tulip that has been so popular here. Yes, Miss Janice, I did see you found the invite. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're gonna need that. Um, I'm not sure how you can like save it, but you should be able to find it on your groups. Um, so tomorrow before we get started, I'll check with everybody just to make sure. Um, but we're gonna do another live, but it'll just be us. It won't be anybody else, um, just me, you, um, and Miss Jerry. And so tomorrow, speaking of tomorrow, I'm going to try to try to remind me to mention this again, just in case I forget. But um, we're actually going to do this vertical, horizontal, where we tilt the camera. Um, so you may need to tilt your phone. Um, just kind of FYI, you may even want to, if you have a laptop, use your laptop to um, to view it. Okay. Um, but you can still use your phone. You don't have to use your laptop. It just gives you more room to, to work um, if you use the laptop instead. But don't worry, you don't have to. Okay, so um, this has been a really popular video. Um, Miss Jenny does it with a charm pack. And so I shrunk it to use a jelly roll. All right, now this took me a couple of days because first I tried to do this and I tried to do that and I thought, well, maybe I make it easier doing this. And anyways, it was kind of, I went back and forth with it until I finally figured out, you know, the easiest way to do this. So, let me see. I have all my pieces cut out. I'm sure you guys do too. I'm going to put this back on the wall. Okay, there we go. It's getting a little lopsided, but it's up there. Okay, let's turn this down just a little bit, even though it'll probably show off some of my fat. This shirt is just a large, and um, I have stopped wearing larges, but it was in my closet, and it was clean, of course. My husband does laundry every Monday, but it was clean, and, and I thought, well, you know, I've been wearing all the same shirts, so I needed something different, so I pulled this one out, and I love the V-neck on it. Um, I love t-shirts with the v-neck um, because the other ones are really tight in fact the first one I put on I had to take it off it was um, it was up there around my throat okay so here's what you should have you should have three different colors of your jelly roll cut into two and a half by two and a half inch squares like this okay with those, you're going to need the one and a half by one and a half inch ex, um, accent colors. Okay, and you should have 12 of those. You should have 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 12, 12. Hey, Miss Kathy, welcome. We just got started. Um, good afternoon to you as well. Um, we just got started going over what we should have because I want to kind of jump right into this because this is this may take us a while. I know I felt like I was working on it for hours last night. Probably wasn't, but it felt like it. Okay, so then you should have um, 12, two and a half by two and a half inch accent colors and 12 green. If you don't have green in there, any color that you want to use that would work for a stem or leaves, stem and leaves, that's fine. I decided to go ahead and add a color into my purples just because I thought it would kind of add a little something to it. Um, you know, just kind of a little bit of pop for that, okay? So that is our block that we're working on today. It's called Tulips. Um, originally, it aired with uh, Miss Jenny, um, and she did it in a charm pack, and I just shrunk it down for a um, for the um, jelly rolls. Um, so if you're interested, her video is online. It's fabulous. They had like a something about tiptoeing through the tulips, uh, three in one kind of thing where they did a, um, a table topper, you know, a table runner, 
um, a quilt and, and something else, my brain just went completely bloop, so I have no idea. I don't remember the third one, but it was a really cute video. I watched it all the way to the end. Um, this was a recommendation by one of the other um, uh, people that follow, um, and so they sent me the picture. I watched the video, figured out how to shrink it, and this is how it shrunk. This is not my design, okay? Mrs. Jenny was the one that originally did this design or and I'm not even sure if it was originally hers doesn't matter point is is I'm not claiming this as my own design okay uh, but we are going to go and see if we can figure out how to do it in a jelly roll and remember this is a mystery jelly roll which just means that everything we've done so far has been all jelly roll fabric even our accent colors come from a jelly roll fabric okay um, and we have no idea what we're going to have the next day even sometimes I don't know what we're going to have the next day until the next day um, so that's what the mystery comes from. No, I couldn't tell you exactly how much fabric you were going to need. Um, all I can do is kind of guesstimate. I do know that you would need at least two jelly rolls um, if you want to do the 20 blocks because you can only get to about block number 12 with one jelly roll. And I think I barely made it. I think I had to dip into my second jelly roll fabric. Okay, the other thing you're going to need, you're going to need six of the four and a half by two and a half um, squares. Hey, Miss Brenda, welcome. Okay, so if you've got everything cut, the first thing I think we ought to do is go ahead and start with our corners and our half square triangles. So, ooh, excuse me. I would, let's start with these. Let's start with the leaves. Um, the stems we're going to leave for later because we have to do something particularly special with that. Okay, so let's lay these out. Okay, let's lay these out over here. I'm gonna put them on my little my little table, which I found a little button on my phone. Um, it doesn't look brighter, but it's supposed to be brighter. I It looks brighter to me, but when I look at my tablet, it doesn't. I don't know if it's something that I have done with my tablet or what the heck it is. Oh, come on there. My tablet is acting up like majorly. I mean, it's like slow as molasses. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm kind of lucky because this one, it's you, you can't really tell. Okay, so six of them, we're gonna do all 12 in a half square triangle. So go ahead and lay them all out. One, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Now, this one, no matter which way I turn it, even brighter or whatever, it doesn't it doesn't seem to matter much. Okay. Glasses. Yes, the reason I was grasping my chest was because I was looking for my glasses. Normally I hang them from the V in my shirt, but apparently I didn't do that today. I will say that I was working on a quilt today, and I'll tell you what, today was just one of those days where I really just wanted to throw my long arm quilt uh, machine, long arm machine against the wall. Thing was driving me crazy. Of course, for the most part, it's operator error, but I can still blame the machine anyways, right? Okay. And my grandbaby's in the background with her favorite TV show, and it's just me and her today. So, um, I got to tell you, my husband is so sweet. He called a friend of his um, who does woodwork, and he called him and told him that I needed more shelving for my fabric, um, that my fabric was fixing to expand and I needed more, more space. So he's over at his friend's house, and they're making me some new shelving. And it's it's I kind of got a special way I, I want the shelving. Um, I really, really like the ones I have, and so they're going to duplicate the ones I have. He took one with him, and this guy that does this stuff, he's really good at it. Sweet old Ken. He's a wonderful guy. I like him a lot. Anyway, so that's where my hubby is at today. He's working with a friend of his. All right, now let's see where I'm at here. I'm going to do my usual shift. There we go. Okay, and at first, my brain was like, okay, well, I need to shift left this and left right. No, just make sure you get it, and then we can, we flip them 
with where we need them to go. So just try to make sure that they all look pretty consistent so that when you're putting, putting them down, you know that you can flip one one way and one another way. Now, Mashila, you've already been through that. That's pretty accurate, right? But it doesn't matter which way you flip these. You just need a good half square triangle, right? my music I didn't even look on Facebook on the um, YouTube to see if they um because on about two-thirds of the videos I've done because there was music on them they put copyright on them so which is fine I mean these were all for public use anyways that wasn't meant for advertising stuff or whatever although I do talk about it once in a while Miss Valentina on yet? I had a question for her. So how's everybody's day going so far? Miss Brenda, you getting excited yet for our for our class tomorrow? I know I'm excited. I'm a little nervous too. I'm always a little nervous. I've never done a class with someone. Usually it's just me. So I'm actually excited how that works. I haven't actually made this walk yet. Just oh, okay. All right. I was thinking you'd already done it. Well, your directions for that were really was really good. I mean, it really made a huge difference. Needless to say, I kind of messed it up on my first run through. And I wound up with a lot of blocks I couldn't use because I cut them wrong, thinking that I could add that stem in there a little easier doing it like blah, blah, blah way. But... That was a complete bust on my part. So basically I had to go back to the drawing board and it was probably about a good hour or two working on it that night and that finally that's when I decided we were gonna have to do something else because it wasn't coming out right. I was messing it up left and right. But now I think I got it. My samples on the board behind me. It looks good. Thank you to the Missouri Quilt Company for having such a wonderful video. And again, I'll make sure that all my um, references, I will put together a whole sheet. In fact, I'm going to put together a little booklet with all the different blocks that we have done with the references on where I've got the ideas from or, you know, how I, how I came to have those so that if you ever want to look them up, and see what other kind of blocks the person has or the book has, um, you should be able to do that. Okay, the very next thing we're going to do is we're just going to keep on going, okay? So let's go ahead and grab our 12, our 12 colors right here, and mine should be straight up. Hopefully they're all right side up. These I tried to make sure were up right side up. Um, will it be on your page? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm going to try and find a way to at least have the 1 through 20 um, cutting instructions um, listed in there. So you can go in and pull up. Um, sorry, it, it, my tablet made, made me 
lose my train of thought there. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, as far as like the cutting instructions, I think those are all going to be on there, but I think what I'm going to go back and do is, um, for each block, uh, make cutting instructions with the amount of fabric and, and things like that. That probably won't be on my page, but it will be available. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet. Okay. So for the next one, we're not doing a half square triangle. What we're going to do is we're going to put the square right up there in one of the corners. And we're going to do what they call a snowball. Um, I didn't know what that was until I made a, um, a really cute B style um, quilt with a, uh, a tumbler, a tumbler padding pattern, tumbler like a, like a cup tumbler. And um, I'd never done a, a snowball. And so I saw this thing in a magazine, it reminded me of a honeycomb. And so I did it where I did these four things in each four corners, creating kind of like a hexagon um, shape. And somebody called that a snowball. I thought, well, crap, that wasn't what I was going for. I was going for a honeycomb, but that's okay. Cause I thought it worked out anyways. It's, it is what I call it, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're gonna do that one from corner to corner, okay? So we're going to stitch it. Let me show you right here from this side to this side, right across there. So kind of like a half square triangle, only we're using just this piece of the fabric to do the half square triangle on. Okay. So let me get that right up there. And now you're going to do all four. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. There four. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Again. <laughs> This was quite a treat trying to work on this one. So we're going to do all of them just like that. We're going to do right sides together. Put it up in any one of the corners, unless you have a specific corner you like better. Okay. Um, just maybe if there's a, a blank spot on one corner, put it in that corner so it covers the blank spot. I had that with one of mine. Okay. And then just stitch it right on down. Corner to corner, right across, as if you're doing a half square triangle. And these should all be down, but apparently they're not. And even when I was done, I still had to size up my quilt a little, or my block a little bit, because it was slightly over 12 and, a, 12 and a half. So at least I was over and not short, which sometimes is what happens to me. So I figure if we can just get all of these stitched, put together, stitched together, combined, whatever that favorite word of yours is, um, then we can iron them all and keep on moving and hopefully get through this in an hour. Although I have a feeling it may take a little longer than an hour. So tomorrow's block is probably gonna be something simple because we have the class at, um, excuse me, at 7.30. Um, so I need a little time to prepare, but I don't really wanna cut out my day. I don't want to, um, Don't really want to lose a day either. I'll just be on my feet a lot. That's all. So just one more time, um, every, for everybody who's going to be on tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing the. Um, about y'all but I keep getting these notifications that Walmart is telling me my pickup is ready and um, I don't know who used my phone number but I do not have uh, I have never done a Walmart pickup and yet I keep getting these notifications for it and I don't dare click on it because it could it's probably um, somebody trying to take over my phone but I get it all the time I mean like 
pretty darn consistently. Whoever wrote my phone number down wrong, probably the same one who keeps applying for um, student loan relief. I get phone calls and texts from people that are like, oh, hey, uh, Ashley, we would, we would love to help you with that student loan problem you have. And I'm like, um, my name's not Ashley. <laughs> and it's not my daughter either. She, she wouldn't give them my phone number. And the last name that they use, whoever it is, it's, it's not the same either. Anyways, you guys, any of you guys get a lot of that stuff? I mean, I, and I get phone calls consistently. We even had one on Sunday. And there goes my dog. Problem is, a lot of the ones that call you on the times when, you know, telemarkers aren't supposed to call. <laughs> Got a hair up my nose there. <laughs> um, they're not actually telemarketers. They're scammers, so it's not like you can sue them. I mean, they're probably over in Nigeria or something. Indonesia or Taiwan, someplace like that. Who knows? Two more to go here, and then we'll have them all done. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that when we're done with the 20, that I can go ahead and um, put it all together and uh, do it with, you know, the exact amount of fabric that you would need, um, what blocks are in there, where they come, where they came from. So I have a whole little booklet put together. And last one. Make sure I got right side, wrong side. Okay. All right. Well, a lot. By the way, I found my scissors. They were out in the living room. And I'm not even sure how they wound up out there, other than probably when I was working on the computer, getting stuff ready for ship out. I always have thread all over me. Um, getting ready for sh things to ship out, I probably had it on my shirt and then took it off so that I would um, not damage something. All right, so now we're going to come right over here and go ahead and just snip them apart. Kind of nice when you get all this part done at one time. Before I came on today, I was so hungry. I mean, like starving, kind of hungry. And which was kind of funny because I had a bagel earlier, which I usually don't eat that much bread, but I really wanted a bagel. It was blueberry. Anyways, and so I was munching on a cookie. I don't usually eat those in the middle of the afternoon either. But when you're hungry, you tend to do things you don't normally do. Okay. Now, I will tell you that um, I did press open a lot of those seams because they also kind of get a little bit bulky, especially on the, um, the leaf part. Bring that over here. All right, we're going to do kind of like we did yesterday. We're just going to check every single one and see which way it folds better. Okay, I can even tell this one already. Because I'm kind of leaned toward the other side. Okay. That one looks good. And then we can just go ahead and trim them off and then... Um, iron them down. There are some things that you just can't avoid. I mean, it's, it's going to be a little time consuming. Hey, Miss Sue, welcome. Are you um, on your break? Are you working? So yeah, there are some things that are just kind of time consuming and you just, you know, bite the bullet and do it so that it's done and out of the way. Now, if you want to go ahead and iron these as you're looking at them, go for it. I just, um, 
I just want to make sure they're all good so I know which ones I can iron and which ones I need to trim differently. Yeah, that one looks good. So far, so good. I'm getting a little better at this. Okay. So now I'm just going to go back and trim everything off. And like I said, you can use your rotary cutter. You can use your scissors. Either one works. I've done both. I don't have a preference on this one. Um, I am getting down to my last couple of um, clappers that I have available. Hopefully I'll have some more. Um, Miss Janice, wonderful Miss Janice, said she'll try to get me some more soon. Um, but if you're in the market for one, I'd say jump on it. You'll find them in my Etsy shop. Just kind of tell me which one you like because there are three different colors on there. Just tell me which one is um, your preference. Um, because the first page just automatically comes up pink and I don't know which one is which. Okay, let's make sure I got the right one here. I hope I didn't cut this wrong. Okay, those are cut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and cut these. These have to be right no matter what. Yeah. Okay, I said that. Now I can't help it. I have to look and make sure. You know, with spring right around the corner, this is actually a really, really cute um, block. And you should see it in, you know, where they have it all blocks, um, all, all tulips. And um, they have another block that goes with it. It's really cute as well. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but you should watch the video. The video is just really, really cute. So far, so good. And remember to get a chance to check out my um, my YouTube. I have loaded up all the videos from here onto YouTube as well. And I also have an Etsy. I played around with some pyrography. I don't even think I'm saying it right. Basically, it's wood burning. And um, the very first thing I ever did was a bamboo cutting mat and it turned out so cute so you can check it out there on my um on my etsy i'm actually working on the second mat the second um bamboo cutting board i'm sorry it's a board not a mat um and uh it's really adorable i just haven't had any time to get it done finished okay i need I need a little bit of spray starch. My my corners don't want to stay out. Please don't. Please. Hang on. Kiki. It is not five o'clock. Here. Go. 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 Come on. Come on. She's gonna make me crazy if I don't figure out what she wants. She's, whoops, sorry. She is deaf, so she can't hear us, but she can smell us. So if we come in the house, she smells that we're here. And um, she just goes crazy. You should hear her when she starts whining. Sounds like somebody's trying to kill her. Anyways. I love that dog, but I swear I thought we were going to lose her two or three different times. Um, she didn't seem like she could bear, she could barely walk, she could barely function, and then two days later she was fine. She was jumping all over the place, acting like a little teenager again, and then a few months later she's blah. But I think that dog is going to live forever. 
She's been with us a long time. I'm going to say, I think we've had her probably about 12 or 13 years. And when we got her, she was, she was a couple of years old. So, and I love my dog. I don't know if I want another one. If it was just me, I'd say yes. I would love to have another dog if it was just me. But I got my husband. I got my business. I know I probably mentioned this before, but the... Um, Starch, spray starch. I I love the spray starch, but when they put the scents in it, sometimes they're just so strong that when you spray it, you feel like you've inhaled the whole bottle. And um, so I know Best Press has an unscented, but of course, in the meantime, I have you know lavender all over the house from when I would buy it in bulk, I think. And then they had came up with this flatter. And I think I even that one I got in um, a flavor, <laughs> a scent. But then after using it a couple times, I was like, man, I got to stop. It's, I feel like I'm inhaling this stuff. So I bought the, um, the unscented. And that's pretty much how I got to do it. Unscented all the way. And I know there are some people out there that have like, it's like severe issues with scented things and I, and I don't know how you do it because that's really my only little thing is the the sense with the um, um starch spray starch because I love candles and I love scentsy I have a friend that sells scentsy and I, I think I keep her in business um as you can see, I was actually pressing the wrong direction. These first ones, we're not going to do it um, open, but when we get to the next stage, that's where we do the pressing the open. So what have you guys been up to today? What you been working on? Actually, I got an order for a mask yesterday. I was able to get it all done. Done and out the door. And again, my hope is that I can get back to working on um, the free ones. The ones I can take to Joann's and have them dropped off at the hospitals if they, if they need them. Wherever they're taking them. Whoever's taking them because I've heard that some of the hospitals won't allow them to use them. and Which is fine. I mean, you know, they, they need to be protected. these don't do the job the right way then we want to make sure that they're they're getting the ones they need and um, God bless the um, the apparel shops and the other ones that have stopped producing you know their money makers and have started producing the masks um, for the for the medical field I mean that's just that's phenomenal I heard there was one business that does um, sports apparel and they completely stopped production on sports stuff and started making masks. I think that's great. I just wish I could remember which one it was, which company was doing it. Um, because somebody, somebody needed to do something. If the regular people that normally, you know, supplied the, the mask couldn't keep up with the demand, you know, I'm glad that there was somebody else that could help us keep up with demand. So Miss Faye says she's Miss Faye. Miss Sheila says she's making it with me. So good, good. I know somebody told me I was I would I go really fast. I'm I don't know. I feel like I'm slow. 
and my dog's coming back. He's ready to be, she's ready to be let in again. Her name is Kiki, by the way. Hope you tried Stay Flow Liquid Starch. Have you tried? Yes. Water down with about 50%. Water almost. Yes, actually, I did. What was I have? I was having a little problem with it, and I don't remember what it was. Um, gosh, I can't remember. Oh, it's getting stuck on the bottom of my iron. That's what it was, my iron. Um, I don't know why, but that stuff seems to get thicker on my iron than um, regular starch. Hang on a second. Let me see if I can get my doggy in here. Come on. All right, and she's back in. She probably wants a treat. Okay. But I did like the Stay Flow. I actually still have it in my little black spray bottle. Okay. So here's what's next. When we're, we're going to go ahead and put some pieces together. And we're going to pin them. That way we can keep track of them. So here's what we got. You're going to take two pieces. And one piece is going to go like this, and one piece is going to go like that. Just like that. And you're going to create that little horizontal thing. And if you look, that's going to be one side of the leaf. And then we need to do the other one. And it's got to go the other direction. So... That's what we're looking at. For you guys, it's going to be like this. Okay? And so we're going to flip them over, pin them together, and we're going to get a stack of stuff to go over to the machine, and we're going to do them all at one time. I think those actually look pretty good. Now, if you didn't have a green in your pile, just use something that, you know, if you had it as a leaf or um, a stem, that you would like it. That's all it really come, boils down to. Okay, so you're just going to kind of lay it out, lay out both of them. And then pin them together. Try to remember which way is up so you don't get it pinned wrong. Because if you pin it wrong, then you're going to sew it wrong. But you want to make sure that you have three sets of these. One set for left side, one set for right side. And unfortunately, if you turn it this way, if you sit together wrong and you turn it, and no matter which way you turn it, it's not going to, it won't work out. And I'm not going to tell you how I know that. Okay, last two. And then we're going to stack these up. What you doing over there, May? Boy, that starch makes it so nice to work with. Nice and stiff. Why haven't I done this sooner? Because I don't like messing with starch. But sometimes it's worth it. Okay. The next thing we're going to work with is we have these four pieces right here. Now we're going to arrange them. You're going to take two of them and you're going to turn them in together so that they look like that. Okay? And then we're going to take the other two and we're going to turn them down so that they look like that. So you should have a piece where you have the V at the top and then you have the notch cut out on both bottom sides. So this is going to be the top part of the flower. So let's pin that together. I did not starch those and I can tell that I did not starch them. We're going to go ahead and leave this one the way it is, but um, we're going to do it from side to side on the next one, okay? Call from Master Ken Y. Call from Master Ken Y. I probably just won another $5 million and a Mercedes. That's usually what tell me. Usually what they say, that I want a Mercedes or a Cadillac or something like that. I don't know. Okay, so on this one, again, 
This is what it should look like to you. Okay, so side to side. All right, I keep picking up my long ones. I like my little short ones. My short ones work better. Okay. And we're going to do these side to side. Now, on the one on the, um, this one's no big deal. But on this one, you want to try to match up that seam on the side. So make sure that they look, that they match up because this is going to be important. When you, um, this is probably the most important seam out of the whole bunch is this one seam right here. And it goes down all the way to the bottom. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going to do one more. And then we're going to add two things that we're going to put together. And I'll show you that one in just a moment. Okay, last one. I wasn't sure I was going to like this one for a tulip, but I decided I would go ahead and go with it because I don't think I had used it much on any, any of the other blocks or didn't use it as much. So I decided it was time to put it to work. Just kind of making sure it's matching up all over the place. Come on now. Work with me here. Twist, turn. Ooh, not on there. Hang on. That's looking better. Okay. So I kind of had to play with it a little bit to try to get it to line up. And when I did, well, the bottom wants to be out of alignment. So let's turn it just a little bit. Okay. And then this one, this one's easy. Just line up the top with the bottom and pin it together. Okay, now on two of those, you're gonna need four and a half by four and a half. So we're gonna take two sets of two and a half by two by four and a half and we're gonna stitch them together. Okay, I'm making sure I have my right sides, that's good. And then this one, yep, and yep, okay. One of them has a four and a half by four and a half at the top, and one of them has a four and a half by four and a half in the middle. And the other one has one at the top, one two and a half by four and a half at the top, and one in the middle. So that's why we're gonna just gonna go ahead and put them together now and get that part done and out of the way. Alrighty, everything is now pinned. We're gonna come right over here. And we're going to start stitching. Uh, spray it on, then turn it over to... Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea, Miss Janice. I'll give that a try. Miss Janice says that um, you spray it on and then you flip it over to um, to iron it. And I think that's, that is a good idea. I might try that. I remember when I did actually used to iron clothes, of course I don't do that much anymore, um, I did use starch on some things and I always ran into that problem. The bottom of my ironing board, iron, the bottom of my iron would get that sticky stuff from the um, starch on it and then I would have to clean it. I really do hate that part. I hate cleaning my iron. That's kind of like, you know, if you you have a coffee pot or something you don't actually like cleaning it you just throw it out and get a new one i didn't say that out loud did i we actually take really good care of our coffee pot because we like our coffee we like our coffee maker our coffee maker's cool we have a ninja a ninja coffee maker Which, by the way, I'm almost out of my coffee, and my daughter gets my coffee for me from the hospital. And of course, she's not been to work in a couple of weeks now. Um, 
so I've had to kind of delve into my stores of not so good coffee. Um, excuse me. And of course, my Disney coffee is almost all gone. That phone call, that man calls us two or three times a day with the same thing. You've won money. You've won money. You just have to claim your prize. You've won money. That's two or three times a day. Same guy. He called back again. And I don't even know what to do about it because if you block that number, you just they just call back on a different number. And you would think, okay, if I block enough numbers, but it just it's like they and they don't it's not like they have a big bank of numbers. The problem is is that they just they put in a number that they think it's difficult to explain, but they have a way of making it so that it's somebody else's number. even though they're, that's not the actual number they're calling from. Okay, so this is actually working out pretty quickly here. Just gonna go ahead and quick snip these apart. That one. Hey, Nanny, I got yeah, sweetie. It. Well, it's gonna have to wait, sweetheart. Oh. I know. Ashley will be home very, very soon. Here, you want the rest of my cookie? It's got raisins in it. Well, it might hold you over until we can get you some food. Mm -hmm. Alright, let me get those out of the way. That's in my pile of other stuff. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start opening up these seams. One. So yesterday, um, somebody asked me what was the point of the pressing bar? Why not just do it on the um, ironing board? And I will tell you what, last night, just for giggles, I went ahead and tried to open one up on my ironing board, and I forgot how much I hate it. Kiki, May, will you please pet the dog? That thing, it it goobered up. That seemed so bad. I just wanted to, I wanted to cry. I was like, really? Now I remember why I do it so often on my clapper. I love I love my clapper. 
pressing bar, whatever you want to call it. It's a pressing bar or a clapper. And I think I have them listed on my Etsy as a clapper. Well, at least he stopped calling back. And so I tried it the other day. I actually, I mean, I've done it before, but you know, you, you get in the habit of doing something and you do something weird. Um, but I started at one end and just took the nose of the iron up all the way across and pretty much it separated everything right as it went down. And I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the function of it. But you know, then there's those neurotic people like me who have feel like you have to hold the seam open. I'm sitting there looking at that thing thinking, how did I do that? How did I get them in the wrong place? I didn't get them in the wrong place. I just put them together in, in a different order. That's right. This was the first one. All righty. What are you making? Um, well, hello, Miss Carolyn. Welcome, welcome. This is the um, SRQ Quilter. That is the name of the business. That is my business. Um, and... What we're making is on the wall behind me. Each day we make a different block to show what you can make with a jelly roll. Oftentimes people want to know, yes it is, worth every penny, Miss Kathy. Um, oftentimes people sit there and go, well, what do I do with a jelly roll? It's just two and a half inch strips. There's, what, what can you do with that? Well, there's a lot you can do with it. And so far we're up to block number 17 and there's still plenty more blocks we could make. But you have to stop at some point, right? Um, so the block we're working on right now is the one right here over my shoulder. It's called the tulips. Um, this is a pattern that was um, like two or three days ago shown at, on Missouri Star Quilt Company. They do it in a charm pack, which is a five and a half inch block. And so I'm just showing you how to do it in a jelly roll. I know, Miss Kathy, right? I don't know how I lived without it either. In fact, like I said, when I did that seam the other day, last night, and I thought, okay, and I just put it on there on my blow board here, and I tried to iron it open, and I was like, oh, I do not know what I did before this. I mean, I think Miss Janice, like, saved my life, because otherwise I would have pulled my hair out trying to get all these seams straight. And it's just so smooth, and it makes such short work of it. You know, if you get it started, and um, Miss Carolyn, we're actually talking about this um, this pressing bar that I'm using right now. Um, it's called a clapper or a pressing bar, and the one I have in front of me is one that is made by a um, uh, one of my ladies from my guild, and she's actually on with us right now, and she makes them, and I sell them for her. Um, I don't take a commission on it; it's strictly for my ladies. Um, in fact, there's there's a few things that I do. Not, not a lot because I haven't had a lot of people ask me, but there's a few things that I will do for people that, um, you know, it's, it's not about making a buck. It's about helping out where I can. And um, by selling these for them, um, it helps them to get a little bit of extra money because I know most, most of my, my ladies are retired, um, which is absolutely fabulous. I'm trying to do that myself. So hopefully, hopefully this is, this is my fun retirement. Okay. I'm actually going to bring my little board back over here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting these together, okay? And we're going to need two. They're going to go like this, and we're going to stitch them together. Is there a better word than stitch? Combine, place. I know it seems like there's a word that's, that's out there that it's like me. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, I do apologize, Miss Carol. We are making a quilt. Um, after we get the 20th block done, then we're gonna take one day and we're gonna do nothing but put it together. And we're gonna take all 20 blocks and we're gonna put it in a quilt all together. And uh, that will be our 21st session, is putting that quilt together. 
and hopefully we'll get to do that in front of my um, um, my design wall, which is actually out in my studio. Right now we're actually in my living room, my formal living room that I converted into my sewing room. God bless my husband because he let me do it. Um, of course, over there in the formal dining room is where his office is. So his office is right over there um, where the light is. I had to go out and buy like big studio lights to be able to use it here. Um, and then my my sewing studios right here and out there. And I have a long arm, so I do long arm work for other quilters. And of course for myself, long arm is really just, um, I'm doing all the stitching mechanically on a long arm machine which allows me to do all kinds of cool designs. And the throat on mine is about 14 inches, 12 inches, something like that. I don't know, I lost track. Okay, so that's that. Those are the leaves and we're gonna put those off to the side. Now we're going to put together the tulips. And if you look at it, we now have these two parts put together. This is the only one I've done like this. Um, all the others I put together in a different direction. So we're going to match up those seams right here. So we're going to match up the seam here and here and make it look real purdy because you want them right on top of each other, creating a nice little seam there. Hopefully it's going to look seamless. And then you're going to match up the other seam too. So you want to make sure you're getting this one as well. And make sure you check and double check. Make sure it's right where you want it. Because sometimes when you look on it from out here, you're looking at it and it looks right. It looks right. But if you flip it back and look at it again, you realize that it's not right. That it actually looks cattywampa. Yeah, that's a, that's a technical term. Cattywampa is a technical term. Started my quilt by hand. I have done that. I have done... Um, blocks in fact i have one that i take with me um to a doctor's it's kind of like my forever quilt and that one um miss carol was saying that she started a quilt by hand um that one is all by hand it's all paper pieced and so it's uh, hexagons um, that i wrapped around paper and then i stitch all the way around the edge okay so that's what this one looks like and this one's going this way which from top to bottom to do it like this is actually easier because the only seam you have to really match up is this one once you get the other part together and again, just make sure that you're taking the time to really make sure those seams are right. Look, look again. It's kind of like, you know, measure twice, cut once. Well, this same thing. Look twice and then pin. All right. And then one more, just like this. And we're going to flip it over. Check one more time. Yep, looks good still. Check as often as you need to. And I'm going to pin this one up here at the top, and then I'll just guide the rest of that through there. All right, and then we still have these two pieces right here, so we're just going to leave those there. We don't need them right now. And we're going to come right back over here to the sewing machine. Put my pin holder right there. My little antique uh, wood. I don't really know if it's an antique, but it's, it's a little pin holder. And I love it. I got it when I was visiting Missouri Star Quilt Company at the little antique shop that's right next door. And she was very, very adamant in making sure that I knew that she was not part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Which was cool. Oh, if you ever get a chance to go there, and I recommend that you go there because it's like Disneyland, Disney World for, for quilters. But if you ever get a chance to go there and you get hungry, down the street, further out, I mean, just, just a few buildings down there's this old gas station that's converted into this barbecue place y'all i love barbecue and that place was absolutely delicious and they serve so much food on a plate and unfortunately we were leaving right after um we you know were done playing around so we couldn't even take it back with us so but that was just some amazing barbecue I don't even remember the name of the place, but it's a little barbecue place and a converted gas station. And it was really, really cute. And it was really, really hot that day too. I think I remember that as well. 
But if you ever get a chance to go, the place is amazing. And when I was there, Miss, Miss Jenny was actually out of town. But I think, I think one of her sons was coming to greet me, but I didn't know who he was and he waved at me and I didn't realize he was waving at me. I was like, oh, I felt like an idiot afterwards. Because, you know, I was thinking to myself, why would they be waving at me? You know, I, who am I? I'm nobody. But um, anyways, but he, they were very, very sweet. They're like, oh, we'll be right with you. And I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. Because of course, you know, there was one person working the cash register and there was, you know, everybody was waiting to get their stuff cut. And gosh, you guys, I had so much fun that day. You know, and it was kind of neat because I had my, my credit card. <laughs> I put a hurt on my credit card that day. But I didn't really have to turn myself down on anything. If I really, really wanted something, I, I went ahead and bought it. And I love, it's like the first time ever in my life that I actually could do that. And I really, really enjoyed myself. And my husband was just amazing. And yes, I ran over the pins. I'm sorry. I'm a bad, bad, bad person. I ran over the pins. Fortunately, my pins, though, are really, really nice, and they don't usually get caught. I got these from the um, Cotton Patch. When they do their little Sunday soiree, um, I bought them during one of the Sunday soirees, and I, I've never regretted it. It was a really, really um, a good investment. In fact, I went back later and bought some more because it was... And I love the short ones because then I don't have to worry about, you know, doing a lot of pulling, pulling a lot of pin out. So I don't know which one these are, what the, the official name is for this particular pin, but they're not real long and I love them. They are perfect for what I do. Miss Carolyn, you make afghans too? That is so cool. I have done, I did do an afghan for each of my children um, in their favorite colors with this really heavy duty, because we lived in South Carolina, so I was using this really heavy duty, um, uh, very fluffy yarn. Oh man, <laughs> that stuff was so cool. But then we all moved back to Florida and didn't really need a, a heavy afghan like that but they loved it they loved their little blankets in fact they still have them i think i have one i have to repair because they stuck their toe through it which of course ripped one of the stitches but they absolutely loved it i've even made for each one of my children i think even my son i made a, a teddy bear and this was back when they were were younger and may was walking around with this teddy bear and i thought oh that's cute maybe i can make some clothes for it you know, so she can put some doll clothes on it or whatever. And um, then I got to look into that thing. I was like, hey, that's that, that's the teddy bear I made for Ashley. That was Ashley's teddy bear. Um, and sure enough, Ashley's like, yep, yep, that one's mine. I was like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize she still had it. So that was really cool. It makes, it makes you feel good when you find that one of your children uh, cherished something enough that they actually kept it. And let me tell you what, that teddy bear is pretty beat up. There was a, um, a point in time where I was learning how to make teddy bears, movable teddy bears, you know, head, arms, legs, um, clothing for them, that kind of thing. And so I was working on that, and I really thought I was going to try and make a business out of it. And then Build-A-Bear came along, and I thought, okay, so much for that idea. But because they came out, of course, with a, a bear that was less expensive, you could get it a whole lot faster. And of course it was really, really cute. I mean, so, but I did have a name for my business. It was going to be called Three Sister Bears because I have two friends in South Carolina that are like really, really good friends. Honey, I'm talking. I'm still talking. Um, so I had two friends in South Carolina that were like my best buds back then. And they're still my best buds, but um, there you go, sweetie. Throw that paper away, okay? Don't throw it on the ground. Throw it in the trash can. Okay. Anyway, so that's what it was called after. It was, it was, um, it would have been basically named after all three of us. So the three sister bears, but I never did get around to it because like I said, about that time, Build-A-Bear was coming in hot and heavy in the malls and 
just seemed like handmade teddy bears were kind of on their way out. My original idea, though, was for a duck. Well, a goose, maybe. Maybe it was a goose. And you had like a, a monthly subscription for this duck, this goose. And every month I would ship you a a new outfit, kind of corresponding with like what, what month it was. Like um, July would have been, or in June you would have gotten July's, which would have been um, like uh, something patriotic. Um, June probably would have been watermelons. You would have gotten that in May because of the Watermelon Festival in Hampton, South Carolina, which was a huge event where I'm from. Well, where I lived for about 20 some years. Um, in fact, people from all over the place and not even just um, South Carolina, but from all over the country would come to the Hampton County Watermelon Festival. It was like a, I want to say a 10 day event started on, starts on Father's Day and goes all the way through to the next Sunday. And I think that's the mud run, maybe even the Monday. I'm not sure. Maybe it started on Saturday. Might've started on Saturday. I don't remember. I don't know. It's been so long since I've gone. Oh, one more. Sorry, I see it now. It kind of blended in with my table. Anyways, the Watermelon Festival was always really, really the highlight of the year in Hampton. Because Hampton's just a little old town. I think it's got like 6,000 people or something like that. Maybe it's even a little bit more now, but they got about 6,000 people. And they're kind of like Sarasota Bradenton with their Hampton Barnville. So we have Sarasota Bradenton and they have Hampton Barnville. And even together, they don't have as many people as we do in Bradenton. So, but I loved living there and it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. It is definitely a small town. So you, you definitely wound up with um, a lot of small, small town things. Like everybody knew your business, pretty typical. Okay, so here's the first thing we're gonna do. You're gonna decide how you want your flowers. All right, let's get this out of the way for right now because we're gonna need these in a few minutes. So I'll flip these around this way so you can see them. All right, so you now you have to decide how you want your flowers. Um, if you look at the one on the wall, the middle one I have is the long one. It's the one that goes, the, the stem is the longest. So I'm going to, I'm gonna do that again. We're gonna put the stem right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one right here and put it right there. That's gonna be my long one, okay? And then there's a short one and we're gonna put that over here. And this was, yeah, I think I had it straight up and down. You can do it either way. It's a four and a half by four and a half. So you can do it like this or you can do it like this. It doesn't matter. I think I have all of my lines going this way. And then you have to decide which one do you want to go where. I like having the dark one in the middle only because for me, um, I think it helps to separate. Otherwise you wind up with light, medium, dark, but you could do that. You could do that but I still like the media, the darker one in the middle. What do you think? Okay, so now you have to decide. Do you like it like this or do you wanna change it like that? I kinda of like that. Or like that. I kinda of like that too. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'll give you a minute to vote. I'll take a drink of water. So we're going to call this A and this B. B or A. Which do you like better? B or A? Dark one in the middle or light one in the middle? I'm thirsty. I'm getting a drink. How are we doing on time? Ooh, we're over already. I'm trying to remember to drink lots of water during the day. Holy cow. Miss Carolyn says A, which I assume is dark in the middle. Anybody else? I do like I do like that one. So Miss Brenda, our dear sweet Miss Brenda, Miss Brenda likes A as well. Miss Brenda sews, crochets, gardens, and cans. Okay, I can sew and crochet. I have tried gardening. I stink at it. And my 
canning abilities kind of stop at strawberries. So I've had about a 50-50 good luck on canning strawberries, and that's with the inversion method um, where you flip it upside down to seal it. Roberta also says, hey, A. Hey, Miss Roberta. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so that being said, we want to stitch this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, and this one to this one. Okay? Did everybody get that? So, and you have to do this first because we have to put the stem on, okay? So I'm going to stitch this one real quick, and this is just the, the, the medium-sized, the one that's medium-sized. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this on top and get that out of the way. Come over this way. Kind of match those up, match those seams up. Roberta, you kind of snuck in on me. I didn't realize you even made it in on this class today. Okay, so we got that one done. That's done and out of the way. Now we're going to stitch this one to this one. And I'm just going to put it over there. This one to this one. And then this one, oop, this one to this one. Now I've got them all lined up, ready to stitch. And I know which side I want to stitch them on. Okay? You okay, May? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Another one? Uh -huh. Okay. Hang on. Let me get this going. Do. Don't wiggle the table, sweetie. Hurry up. You give everybody motion sickness. Sorry, guys. I just another little snack here. Oh. This one doesn't want to come apart like the other one did. Oh, got it. Okay. There you go. Last one. Eat it slowly. Okay. And then we're going to do this one next. And this one, you should be able to match up the seams on this one. So make sure you take a moment and match up those seams, okay? All right. And then we're just going to make sure that we got this part all straight. And then we're going to put it underneath the needle and stitch away. Oh, I caught on something there. Mm, excuse me. And then the last one, same thing. Make sure you're matching up that seam down the middle because you want that to look nice. And if it's not lined up, when you look at it later, you're gonna be like, oh, I should have done that better. So take a moment, make sure it looks good. Put a pin in it if you need to. Okay. Next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and iron these open as well. These trimmed apart real quick. Grab the extra off this one. And guys, believe it or not, we were almost done. This took me a lot longer between yesterday and the day before messing around with that. So we're actually doing really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and put these right on top of there because I don't want to lose my mojo. And then we're going to iron this one open. Now the last thing you should have that we haven't done anything with yet are the three stems. There's one that should be four and a half inches long. There's one that should be um, six and a half inches long and there should be one that's eight and a half inches long. And we're gonna use all three of them. And we're gonna do that before we do anything else. Yeah, they do make those cheeses hard to open, dark on it. <laughs> My poor grandbaby, she's like, Mimi, you gotta open this. Like, I don't know if I can. That's like pill bottles, you know. Only the kids can open the pill bottles. If your cell phone breaks down, just hand it to your grandkid. They can fix it for you. Okay. 
Now let's get this part straightened out real quick so we know where everything goes. All right, so this one's gonna go there, this one's gonna go there, and this one's gonna go there. All right, so it's gonna look cool as soon as we get it all done. All right, so now let's work on some seams for the um for this. So here's where a little bit of that starch is gonna come in mighty handy. And we're gonna go ahead and do all three of these at once. This is gonna be an eyeball thing. So this is should be about one and a quarter. So if you had a two and a half inch seam, you should have been able to get at least two pieces out of the long one, and then you'll have to cut the other one in half. So here's what we're gonna do. I gotta feel the fabric for a second. Okay, here we go. You're going to fold over just a little bit, about about a quarter of an inch. And again, we're just eyeballing this, okay? Don't, don't freak out and try to find exactly a quarter of an inch. If you wanna make your stem a little bit narrower than the way I did it on mine, mine are actually kind of thick. Um, just bring that, bring that seam in just a little bit more, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right on top there and get it going. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold the other side over. And again, if you want it to look a little bit narrower, just make it a little bit smaller. Create that fold just a little bit tighter. And I'm gonna iron this down real quick and then I'm gonna flip it up so you can see it. Okay. So all I've done is I have closed two, two sides to create one narrow stem. Okay, now I'm gonna give myself one more little quick spray here because if it's nice and stiff, then you know it's going to stay when you got ironed down it. Iron it down, down, iron down. And I do believe my, my dear sweet oldest daughter has just walked in the door and of course the dog is greeting her. Anything fun over there? Uh, just mine. Oh, man. Probably another one tiny little thing. <laughs> it's like every day we get packages, but they're never for me. I don't understand. I want packages too. That's why I order from Wish, so that when they come in, I'm kind of like surprised. Okay, now we're going to take the four and a half inch. We're going to give it a little spray there. And you don't have to use the spray. I'm using it because it helps to kind of manage the... Um, the Flex, flexibility of this fabric. And then I'm just gonna go right down the center. Okay, and another beautiful stem. I'm gonna have that one done. And then one more, and then we're ready to put, it, put our stems on. And we're, again, we're not gonna do the other parts until we finish this part. And this is an important part because when you do put them together, then what's gonna happen is the the end of the stem will be sewn into the seam so you don't have to worry about it poking out. Whereas one of the ones I did, which I'll show it to you in just a minute, um, I didn't do that. I put it on after I did the whole flower. And so by the time I got the, um, got the whole thing sewn together, I was like, okay, I could have avoided this whole problem. Okay, let's move this out of the way. So this one is gonna go right here. This one is gonna go on this one. And this one is going to go on this one. Ta-da! Now you could try to do it so that it's only to right here, but listen, for expedious sake, we expedience sake, we want to make sure that we're getting this done. So let me come in a little bit closer. Hopefully my light over here will allow you to see me. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the small one first. Okay. And if you want to pin it down, pin it down. You know, don't just go go with the flow. Go with whatever works best for you. But I'm just going to kind of get this thing on here. And I'm going to just get my needle. Now, I know you can't tell, but I have just barely, I barely have the foot on top of the very edge. So I'm trying to get just the very edge of the fabric. No back stitching. As you can tell, I had a little bit of a bulk to go over. And I'm using blue and white thread, so you could change it. That would be all right, too. But I'm not going to worry about that. Of course, it does show up all my imperfections, but that's okay. 
This is going to be one tiny piece in a very big block. And here is what it's going to look like. You're just going to stitch it right on the outside. Now, if you want to open it up and stitch it on the inside instead, you know, by stitching down kind of like on a bias where you, you're stitching down one side and then go back and stitch the other. Um, but I say for speed stakes, speed sakes, I'm just going to stitch it right down just like that. of a green. Hang on, let me, you know what, I am going to swap out my thread real quick. Got that one. I do have this one right here. Ashley's here, Grandma. I know, it's so good to have Ashley over here. Alright, this will only take me a second. It's not a very light or dark green. It's actually a very light green, but that's okay. It'll still work out very nicely. I already knew about it. What are you telling her about? She's got to do school. Oh. No, of course not. I was drawing it and I don't want to. You're trying to follow. Yeah. So Ash has been helping her with her homework, getting her work done during the day. So she has to basically wait for Ashley to get home. Because she's kind of got it all figured out, like what's next, what to do, blah, blah, blah. So I just let her have at it. Okay. Now that I got my green thread on there, and again, it's just a really, really light green, but it's what I got handy. And I'm just going to start stitching. I'm going to bring that thread up from the bottom just so it doesn't get all gookied up behind the back. Just on this one. I haven't done that for all the rest of the stuff. Okay. Which I do that for my mask. When I make the mask, I, I do that. Let's see. My aunt in Tennessee made uniforms for the schools. Really? That is so cool. I did try to make uniforms for my kids when they were going to the Christian school, but um, I am really not good at yokes. And a lot of the shirts require a yoke. I did make a yoke for my husband one time. He kind of laughed at me when it was done because it really did look funny. Okay, and then we're just going to flip it around and start down the other side. Get this thing out of my way. I'm trying to keep it kind of in the same spot if I can. I'm just kind of hand feeding it through there. All right. That's one more done. I really admire someone that can do that, who can just look at something and know exactly what they need to do to be able to make it. Now, I can do that with patterns. I can look at a pattern and, and I can see, I can dissect it and see where it's supposed to be, what's supposed to go there. And I'm pretty happy with that. I, 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 can, I can live with that. Okay, I'm going to slide this down just a little bit more. In fact, there's a, um, a quilt up at the historical um, train station in our little town that I am really, really anxious. I took pictures of it, and I'm really anxious because I want to get in there and see if I can recreate this, this quilt from way back when. I'm not even sure what the... Um, what pattern it is. Why did it do that? Alright, All right, hang on. I got, a little, I got a little mess here. Let me see if I can get this fixed. Sometimes I do that. I think it has to do with trying to start up when I should have started down. Well, let's see if I can let's see if I can thread it. Apparently not, because it didn't stay in there. Nope. One more time. Yes. All right. I've actually had more luck with it lately. I'm not sure why. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up. Let me go ahead and pull up that thread real quick. Kind of like I did a few minutes ago. Maybe I'll have better luck with it. Okay. So yeah, being able to look at something and being able to recreate it, to me it's a lot like the... Um, it's a lot like people who can listen to music and be able to just play it because they that's the way they heard it. I had a um, boyfriend back in my teenage years that he was like that. He could hear a, a song and then he could play it on his bass guitar like nobody's business. I mean, the man, he definitely knew how to do it. Alrighty, so there we go. And that's the last one. And I have a little bit of a piece of thread. Let's get that out of the way. And there we go. All right, so let's get this down here. Let me get my screen back to normal. The only thing we have left now is just to put these together this way. So this one's going to go like this. This one is going to go like this. And this one is going to go like this. And again, you're going to want to pin it. Um, you can still follow the seam, even though you're not going to see the seam, because it is behind that little flower um, stem. So let's go ahead and just pin this down. Looks great. Miss Carolyn, you don't have a machine? Slash and sew block. I don't know what the... You might have to tell me more about that slash and sew block. You know, Ms. Carolyn, the only difference between using a machine and doing it um, by hand is the fact that it's a little bit faster. I wouldn't stress over it. If you're interested in something like this, pretty much this is just to help you figure out how to put it together and um, some of the easier techniques. Um, I used to do a lot of work by hand. I know, you can't really see my face. Let's put that back up here. Um, so, I mean, there's... And, there is a uniqueness to hand sewing. It's just like there, there is a uniqueness to machine stitching as well. Um, but with the, with hand sewing, it just, you're going to, you're going to take a little bit longer, but it still has, you know, it has its own class of beauty to it. And Lord knows I've done enough hand stitching, especially, I think I was on vacation once and I had to finish up a class. I was showing somebody how to do um, five inch, you know, uh, charm packs, uh, a design with charm packs. And um, so I was on vacation and I wanted to make sure that she got the information. So I did it on my vacation in my hotel room on a live by hand stitching. In fact, I think I still have that video. Um, I call it Marianne's Charm Packs because she was my student that I was doing the, uh, the piece for. All right, let's keep on moving. We are almost done, ladies. And if there's any guys out there, gentlemen. Just making sure all my seams are lining up on my edges. One more and then oh thank you see the one where we created the block yeah yeah actually you know that's kind of what I was trying to do but I was doing it backwards where I was cutting the block ahead of time and it was so uh oh somehow I popped my thread for a minute there I thought I popped my my needle anyways um so I was trying to do it ahead of time by, by cutting the fabric to match. And um, I just created more problems for myself than it was worth. So yeah, no, that's a great idea. So, so that's what they call that, slash and sew? See, I don't know everything. I probably have more experience with you guys on that side of the camera than I will probably ever have in my whole entire lifetime. 
that's okay. I love learning, and so and sometimes to learn you have to you have to get out of your comfort zone to teach because that's when people will tell you, listen, there's there's this way you can do this, and you can do this, and um, I have probably learned more being a teacher than I probably ever did as a student. Okay. You got some groceries? Yeah, that's what happened. Alright. Okay. Get my needle up there. Yeah, I don't know why that pulled like that. I'm just kind of yank that out just a little bit. Hopefully it'll straighten itself out. I don't have to take a seam out. I hate taking a seam out. I've done it. Done it plenty. But I hate it. Okay. We're going to open up one more set of seams. And Ashley walked outside. Now the dog is whining. Okay. Yeah, that would be perfect. You know, if you cut that, then you're going to lose... Um, You'll lose a half an inch, and of course, there's another three quarters of it. Yeah, one quarter. Yeah, perfect. Oh, and I bet that makes a pretty stem too. That's kind of what I was aiming for, but didn't get it. See her prancing around back there? She's kind of been spending a lot of time out there on the patio, but I mean, not really doing anything. She found a bug earlier. <laughs> A very shiny bug. Yeah, how, uh, she liked her shiny one. bug. Yep. Of course, then she had to, she had to let it go because she thought maybe if she let it go, it would, it would start to live again. So she threw it out in the yard, but it it didn't take a breath. Poor thing. All right. There's that one, and then one more, and then we're going to put this whole block together, and we should have it, have it all done. And this block, you know, my second block, this block right here almost always looks better than my first block, which is that block. And there's definitely something to say for using starch, spray starch, because it definitely made it look nice. Give you nice crisp blocks to work with. Okay, get this out of the way. I got a piece of thread hanging on there. Hang on. And then we got that one. And I think I actually have these backwards. Okay. So here are the three strips, and now we're just going to join them. They're going to join them just like this, right next to each other. And we'll start with this one here. Just like this. And we are going to pin. We're going to pin this seam to this seam. There's no seam there, so we're going to go to this seam. Didn't catch it. Okay. Well, that's the second time in the last two seconds I've managed to catch my finger. And this one to this one. You know, sometimes I can go the whole day without once poking myself. And today I think I've done it three times. No blood, thank goodness. All right. So let's see, and that one should be fine. Now we're going to come back over here. Make sure that looks good.
section. Right down the line. I'm going to make sure this last one, little section is lined up. <laughs> I forgot to pull. We're getting down there, ladies. We're getting there. All right, we're gonna open up that seam. I remember I only have two left, and I don't know how long it's gonna take Miss Janice to get me some more. So if you want those last two clappers, you need to let me know. And Miss um, Valentina, if you're on, I need to know which color you want. I sent you a message to um, ask you which color you wanted. There are only three, so you gotta pick. So Miss Valentina, Miss Valentina has to pick first because she's um, she already made her purchase. Yep, I was right, one pen. <laughs> and a huge box like that, wow. You have to show it to me later. All right, move that out of the way. Now we're gonna do the other side. Same thing, we're gonna match up the seams. And believe it or not, they actually almost match right up, which they should. I mean, if, you, if you're paying attention to your quarter inch seam, they should fall right in line. But sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, and that's okay because you can always fudge it just a little bit one way or the other. The sewing machine will ease it in. And then one last one right here. All right, now, one last seam, and then, ladies, we are done. Going to Home Depot tonight. All right. Got to get me some more. Just in the last couple of days, I've actually gone through most of my supply. So has anybody tried to contact the lady from uh, Bits and Pieces, Miss Linda, about the um, any ironing boards? Y'all know how much I love my ironing board. And when I talk about my ironing board, I'm talking about this little thing right here. Um, I got mine from a show um, that we had for the Guild. The Guild has their own show every two years. And um, I happened to be at one of them. And there was a lady selling these little ironing boards. And they were about $20. And I figured, that ah, that wasn't half bad. Um, so my husband bought it for me. And uh, I'll tell you what, I have definitely, when you're doing little pieces like this and all you need just to iron a little bit, it's kind of nice to be able to bring that over and just iron. But um, the lady here in town, Miss Linda from Bits and Pieces, she actually has a supply of them. So I don't know, I don't know the lady's name that I bought mine from, but she has a, the exact same thing in her shop. And hers even looked really kind of cuter. Um, so... And mine, I had used it so much that it stained, so I finally had to go and put a new cover on mine. All right, we are down to the last part. This is it. We are down to the last part. Okay. Iron this down. And we got some definitely a lot of chunks and honks and a lot of fabric in here. So that's why we're opening them up the seams so that when you go to stitch this, um, to quilt it, at least the seams, the bulk of it will have been shifted somewhere else. So you're not dealing with like huge chunks of fabric in one spot. It's kind of put a little bit of all over the place. Okay, last one. Looks good. All right, you ready? You ready for the big reveal? Ta-da! 
Alrighty, there we go. And there is our tulips. What do you think? Think we did okay? I like it. I think I might even like it more than I more than I like that one. What do you think? Kind of cool, huh? So I definitely thank um, Missouri Star Quilt Company for putting that video out. It was very, very helpful. Um, and so making it fit into a jelly roll was because of their wonderful, wonderful uh, tutorials and just what they do. I mean, I'm just, I'm in awe of that shop. I mean, just, I love that shop. Um, but anyways, so now we have tulips that fit into our, into our, our quilt. So this is number 17. We have three more to go. Um, tomorrow's probably going to be kind of simple. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking nine patch. Um, so I will have those cutting instructions to you. And we're going to find a simple, easy way to do um, our next block. And then hopefully get back to something a little more complicated. Uh, because then we'll have 18. No, 18's next. 19 and 20. And I'd really like to do something kind of fun. And I really want to do an applique. So 19 or 20 is probably going to be an applique or maybe we'll put some kind of applique on our the one we're going to do tomorrow who knows okay all right y'all this was fun i hope you had a good time i know i did um so i'm getting two quilts out of this one is the baby quilt for my daughter who is pregnant she's in her second trimester and then this one i haven't decided what i'm going to do with this yet we'll have to wait and see i know i kind of alluded to maybe i will do a giveaway or maybe i'll sell it i don't know or maybe I'll just keep it. Who knows? All right. Well, listen, guys, thank you very much. Ooh, all right. You know, I just haven't even had a chance, Miss uh, Sheila, to even pull that up to see what that block was that you sent me. Um, but please feel free to keep sending me blocks. Um, I love looking at them and pulling them apart and seeing how we can fit them into a jelly roll. So I love that part of it. Okay, so if you have any ideas, uh, private message me or email me at srqquilter at gmail.com. That's S-R-Q-Q-U-I-L-T-E-R at gmail.com. Yes, there are two Q's in there. And um, you can send me your ideas or a block, draw it out, put it on grid paper, however you want to do it, and I'll see if I can convert it into something we can do with a jelly roll. But this was fun. You guys, thank you so much. Um, if you have any prayer requests or anything, just go ahead and private message me or email me and I will definitely pray for you. Um, I know we've been praying for all the people who have been so sick with COVID. Um, I know I've had to experience myself with my daughter. Uh, my daughter who is pregnant um, has COVID. She's still recuperating right now. She still has the shortness of breath and that cough that she can't seem to get rid of. Um, but she works in the medical field. So she's around that stuff all day, every day. Um, so we're just, we're just praying that she's going to have a quick full recovery and that there will be no repercussions for the baby as well. Um, thank you guys so much for your time today. Um, I hope we didn't go too long. Well, whew, yikes, we almost went two hours. It's like an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> We're like an hour and 45 minutes, y'all. I'm sorry. Um, have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your dinner. And I will see you tomorrow at 3.30. And for those of you that are doing the class on the Equinox quilt, um, I will see you at 7.30. We may actually do a little bit of starter thing. And I think I'm going to do a quick um, before the quilt tutorial thing just something quick um, so just kind of keep watching out for it you should find it on your group um, on your equinox group chat group page that i made for everybody all right you guys thank you so much have a wonderful evening Mwah. see you tomorrow